Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Um, you know, I'm having to deal with these subjects of things that are pagan, just because I think it's important as we uh, travel in this life, this new life, as we come acquainted with the Most High and His Son, that we acknowledge the things that we have done in our past that was not correct. And I just think that this is a good time to continue with that uh, truth sets you free. And as you can see today, we're talking about the pagan roots of New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me, let me just say this. A few years ago, about five or six, um, some information came to me that made me question everything I have been taught. And I realized that the thing that came to me, I didn't believe at first. And then I ended up accepting it because of the way the group and everybody else around you and your circle of belief systems taught. And you ended up accepting it. So I had to go back and study for myself from the Word of God and research the pagan roots of that thing. And I say, wait a minute, if this is a problem, then what else is a problem? Which sent me on a search for things that I had to question. And that's why I've come up with understanding about Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, all kinds of things. But I'm hoping that as you um, listen to me, not just listen to me, that you will go back and research for yourself, you know. But I just want to let you know that, I don't know, things are just, this world we're in is just so deceptive. So please, before we get started with the information, please subscribe and hit the post notification bell. Uh, hit the thumbs up button and share the video. Uh, do whatever you can to help me. I I really do appreciate you stopping by. So let's talk about the truth about New Year's. How did this celebration of New Year's Eve begin? And why is the beginning of the New Year placed right in the middle, dead of winter? And where did the many customs surrounding it originate? We're having a winter freeze right now in the south all over the united states it's just really cold and in a, next week or whenever you see this video it doesn't matter they're going to be celebrating a new year in the middle of winter now next week my time we're going to have nice warm weather but it's still right in the dead of winter so where did this come from and a lot of people assume it's a christian custom again um and waiting the new year out with the festivities the way we do even in some churches i don't know they call it some kind of watch night or something um anyway <laughs> let's look at this and let's see what we can find out new year's is one of the oldest and most universal of all pagan traditions the custom of celebrating it has remained essentially unchanged for nearly four thousand years okay um there is scarcely a people ancient or modern savage or civilized writes theodore gaster in his decisive book the new year which has not observed it in one form or another yet no other festival has been celebrated on so many different dates are in so many seemingly different ways, unquote. So when and how did New Year's celebrations originate? And who began this custom? So, Mesopotamia, writes Earl W. Count, and I'm quoting, is the very ancient mother of civilization. Christmas began there over 4,000 years ago as the festival which renewed the world for another year. The 12 days of Christmas, the bright fires and probably the Yule log, the giving of presents, the carnivals with the floats, 
their merrymaking and clownings, the murmurings who sing and play from house to house, the festives, the church processions with their lights and song, all these and more began their centuries before Christ was even born, and they celebrated the arrival of a new year, unquote, in 4,000 years of Christmas, page 20 and 21. So that's how it began. The celebration of New Year's began in ancient Babylon and Mesopotamia. It was a pagan custom of ancient sun worship 2,000 years before the birth of Yahushua, Jesus Christ. The celebration of New Year is never once commanded in the Bible. Commanded in the Bible. Jesus and the apostles never observed it, and Moses even forbade it. In Jeremiah 10, verse 2, and we've looked at this verse before because it keeps becoming relevant about these things. It doesn't say it doesn't matter. It does matter to God whether you adopt a custom of the heathen. The Bible tells us to learn not the way of the heathen. This is something uh, heathens do, Gentiles do. But as we can see, the world is on par with, I should say, the church is on par with the world. Okay, so New York's famed Times Square at midnight, December 31st, thousands gathered to usher in the pagan Roman New Year. Um, the undampened spirits of the crowd bring to mind the ancient Romans Saturnalia. We talked about this. The New Year's festival that had ordained in Babylon found their way to Greece and finally to Rome. The Romans called it Saturnalia in honor of Saturn. Among them was extremely popular, a time of reveling, drinking bouts, orgies, finally ending in human sacrifice. And I'm quoting uh, from that uh, same book, 4,000 Years of Christmas, page 28. The first day of Saturnalia shifted during the lifetime of Rome. It began around the middle of December and continued until January 1st. In its midst was December 25th, the day as the Romans calculated when the sun would at its lowest ebb, unquote, by E.W. Counts. Now remember, he said um, it continued to January. It was those 12 days of Christmas. That's where that song came from, which was feasting and reveling and drunkenness and rowdiness and <laughs> all kinds of things. Of course, they make the song kind of cute with little things that make you want to sing to take your mind off what those 12 days were. So you sing the 12 days of Christmas and you think it's so wonderful, but it really wasn't. It was Julius Caesar, the emperor of pagan Rome, who instituted the New Year's festival on January 1st. In 46 BC, Caesar adopted the Julian calendar. He transferred to the first day of January all the lascivious customs surrounding Roman Saturnalia. And it was accepted by the church fathers but how did such a thoroughly pagan day ever institute insinuate itself in our modern Christian calendar? Well, the answer is from church history. In 375 AD, this is when Constantine is in power. This is the period when Emperor Constantine imposed Christianity upon the Roman world. Now, I'm saying this is false Christianity. What you see today and coming from Catholicism and all that uh, Constantine instituted wasn't what the early church of the Most High were. These people were not pagans. But this, what he gave to the world was, and what this group of people did who professed to be Christians adopted paganism into their custom. You can look at Rome and see paganism all through. I'm talking about Roman Catholicism.
And I'm quoting from that same book, page 35. It says, there were many immigrants into the ranks of Christians by this time, writes Earl Count. The church fathers discovered to their alarm that they were also facing an invasion of pagan customs. The habit of Saturnalia was too long to be left behind. Well, I'm sorry, was too strong to be left behind. At first, the church forbade it, but in vain. I'm telling you, the people that called themselves, these people weren't true believers. They embraced this paganism and the pagans were coming in because they wanted positions and stuff. So they were coming into the church uh, by the thousands and the people were embracing these new customs that were coming in and the church, that church couldn't stop it. Rather than resist the influence of pagan customs, the Catholic church fathers compromised. You see, uh, if you can't beat them, join them. Hey, that's what they did. And I'm continuing. It says the church finally succeeded in taking the merriment, uh, the greenery, the lights and the gifts from Saturn and giving them to the babe of Bethlehem. The pagan Romans became Christians, but the Saturnalia remained. Pagan Rome, papal Rome, join forces. And then modern Christians take it a step further. Rather than present a gift to Jesus on the day they falsely assume to be his birthday, we talked about that, the world is busily trading presents among themselves. Christ has been not only forgotten at Christmas time, but is not so much a toast amid the partying at New Year's. <laughs> Listen, people say you're going to put Jesus back in the, in the Christmas and they celebrate and they pat. They might tell a little story from Luke chapter two. That's a, that's all he gets. The rest of those, that time of shopping and partying, he is not in that. He is not in that. During the Middle Ages, many of the ancient Roman customs were maintained and argumented, augmented by the incoming heathen rites of the uh, Teutonic people. There's a German uh, Nordat, Nordat, Nordat people, Tunic. I think that's how you say that. It was during this period that the customary Yule log and mistletoe were added to the popular New Year's festival. The Yule log is a carryover from the bonfires of sun worship. And mistletoe is a parasite used in Druid rites as a symbol of sex worship. Now y'all know, y'all know, Christmas time, New Year's Eve, it don't matter. You hang that pair, it's a parasite, okay? So that means it sucks the life out of the light, out of another plant. So it's a horrible plant. And so this parasite is hung around. And this is how you know what I just read is true. Because it don't matter who gets caught up under that thing, you gotta kiss this person. This stranger, this man, woman, it don't matter. You get caught under the mistletoe, you got a kiss. So this tomatic customs were added. The date of New Year's celebrations was temporarily changed to March 25th to coincide with the dramatic spring rites of fertility. Now, I've got some pictures here of a papal medal of Pope Gregory the 13th designed by L. Pram, is dated 1582, marking the year of the Gregorian calendar reform. On the reverse of the medal, it is a winged dragon and a serpent encircling a ram's head. Oh, y'all, I wish I could show it to you. Maybe I can, maybe I'll try to show it to you. Can you see that? Can you see it? I think you can. Okay, so there's a goat's head, which is the devil. I don't care what nobody say that's representative of the of the evil one. Then there's the winged dragon, which is also a, the devil. And then the serpent, all signs of Satan. 
finally, Pope Gregory reinstituted the ancient pagan Roman date of January 1st. He imposed it on the whole Western world in 1582 when his Gregorian calendar reforms were accepted. All Roman Catholic countries accepted the change at once. Sweden, Germany, Denmark, and England, the strongholds of the Druids, finally acquiesced to Rome in the 1700s. So this was the um, customs of the Druids. That, that was a stronghold for them in those countries. And they held out on this until the 1700s. Then they also embraced it. So today, New Year's Eve has become a time for people to wallow in excessive liquor. You know, that's a part, you know, of the, of the festivities. The modern attitude seems to be have a wild time New Year's Eve and turn over a new leaf on New Year's Day, which you and I know does not happen. <laughs> oh, my. New Year's resolutions are empty and meaningless, usually trifling matters of jest. Few people make lasting change because without God in your life, you can really make no lasting change. Without the Son of God in your life, there is no changes that can be made. They're just empty promises, promises like ropes of sand. Most people seem to have convinced themselves that God is out of the picture for good, that God is not concerned with their modern revelings, drunken parties, and pernicious behaviors because they never speak of him. So what does God have to say about New Year's Day? Does he condone observing this pagan festival, practicing pagan customs in the name of Christ? Well, the Father does not compromise. Yahuwah does not compromise. Uh, let's see what he has to say. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 12 verses 30 to 31. Take heed to your, to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after they have been destroyed from before thee and that the thou inquire not after their gods saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shall not do so unto the eternal thy God for every abomination to the eternal which he hateth hath they done to their gods so in other words Yahuwah is saying listen don't look at what these people do to serve their gods in this world don't do it and you say well it's not about God it is about God because it's about the God of this world and if you follow after what people are doing you're following after that God so he says it's an abomination to him don't do it. So what were the customs that God hates and condemns in Deuteronomy? Well, they were those pagan rites that were abominable, all those rites that were pagan. Okay, these very rites and customs practiced in ancient Canaan and Syria included the New Year's Day festivals. From the ancient Canaanites to the Greeks learned the same right so we said it's been going on for four thousand years and these same people looking at all these different cultures are involved involved involving themselves into this now let's talk about because we said a lot of liquor is involved in this time let's think about this now theodore gaster uh writes concerning the familiar new year's eve babe you always see that little angel look like a little baby or something I don't know. Actually, the New Year's babe is older than he looks. In ancient Greece, it was customary at the great festival of Dionys. Dionys. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Y'all have to excuse me. I can't say this word. To parade a babe cradled in a winnowing basket. This was taken to symbolize the ancient or periodic rebirth of that God as a spirit of fertility. So who was Dionymus? Who was this Dionymus? None other than Bacchus, okay, the God of wine. 
That's why it's always liquor involved in the celebrations during these holidays. In his honor, the Greeks held a festival called the Festival of the Wine Press. At the time which corresponds with our months, January and February. Today, more alcoholic beverages are consumed during this holiday season than any other time of the year. I mean, in consumption, in terms of, you know, people drink all the time if they're drinkers. But this is when it's really consumed. New Year's Eve is noted for its lasciviousness wild and wanton parties people are deceived by riotous pagan holiday spirits for the most part emanating from liquor bottles all the while calling it christian so let's talk about the father time i think that you see the picture that came in on the video when it started how the winter like we're having right now snow dead cold everything's dead and it was a picture of this of this guy back of us that we're talking about comes up. Another symbol of the New Year's celebration is equally pagan. It is the familiar figure of a white-haired man carrying a sea. What does he represent? The ancient Greek god Kronos. It is from the name Kronos we desire our we derive our word chronograph chronograph which measures time among the greek gods chronos originally cut a swath of human sacrifice with his sharpened seed the silent reaper anciently reaped little children in horrible episodes of mystical can cannibalism this Greek rite of human sacrifice was adopted by ancient Rome, where human sacrifice was practiced until, until 300 AD. No wonder Yahuwah warns people about this celebration as in it being an abomination we read in uh, Deuteronomy 12:31. We don't know all the stuff that corresponds with these days that's the thing that got me when i had to rethink and re, uh, you know kind of come up again thinking why am i doing this and then when you go back to research why things happen then you say can i really be a part of this strange as it seems the professing christian world praises and practices customs and days of pagan origin thinly cloaking them in Christian sounding names. You too may have accepted these traditions of men, not realizing that they're pagan to the core. So in art, Kronos was depicted carrying a sickle used to gather the harvest, but this was also a weapon he used to castrate his father. Yep. In fear of a uh, prophecy that he would be in turn be overthrown by his own son, Kronos swallowed each of his children as soon as they were born. In art, this is what how art uh, portrays this. So I'm quoting, In vain do they worship me, said Jesus Christ, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. This is just one of the meanings that uh, Yahshua was telling us about teaching for doctrines, commandments of men. There's so many things that are going on that the church brings in. The churches are going to be doing just like they're doing Christmas. They're going to do New Year's. They're going to do all of this. Okay. Even people who claim to be enlightened and um, in the know and in the present truth, as it said, you know, they're going to be participating in this. Jesus said it was possible to worship God, to venerate the name of Christ, and still do it all in vain. Uh, in Mark chapter 7, uh, verse 7, 9, and 13, it says, Full well ye reject the commandments of Yah, that ye may keep your own tradition, he continues, making the word of Yah none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. Many people will confess uh, when forced to 
the pagan origin of these days, but they stubbornly refuse to stop observing them. And Yah will be your judge. I know people who will anything they can do to find a way to keep Christmas. They will justify it. You know, it's for the children. Uh, find somebody, an outside writing that will contradict God's word and they accept that writing uh, to justify. But, you know, God is to judge, not me. I'm just saying. So you think about it. In the field of snow, like we're having right now, all over the country, there's ice, there's snow. Uh, and we're going to bring in a new year in that kind of weather. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. The pagan Romans also celebrated New Year's in the dead of winter. God ordained uh, n no such thing. The beginning of spring, when new life buds forth, is the true beginning of God's sacred year. And I know most of us don't go by that calendar. And I'm not going to tell you that I do. I do that the calendar that we have. But you still don't have to go along with the holidays, you know. Remember... It was the Father who set things in motion at creation. He has a right to tell us when to do things. He has a right to tell us what day is the Sabbath and when to keep it. He also has the same right to tell us uh, what day is the new year. Um, God's sacred calendar year begins in the spring, not in the middle of the dead of winter. In Exodus 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, And... Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the new year to you. The first month of God's sacred calendar is called in the Bible, Abib. It means the month of green ears. Later, the Jews called it Nisan. A Babylonian word having the same meaning. So you'll see when we're talking about Passover or uh, Easter the time that some of you call it. It'll be called a bib or Nisan. Okay. I'm, uh, that's just what those words mean. It was the month of a bib or Nisan that Israel came out of Egyptian captivity under Moses in Exodus 34, 18. The Hebrew month Abib overlaps between March and April. You know how things are. So it could be the end of March or the beginning of April. It kind of fluctuates like that on the uh, pagan Roman calendar that we use today. So Yah placed the beginning of the sacred year in the early spring, marking the beginning of the seasonal harvest. The two annual feasts in Palestine foreshadow God's plan that uh, foretold spiritual harvest for the souls to be born in his kingdom. Now, the Bible speaks of a great false religious system which would think to change times and laws. You can find that in Daniel 7, 25. And if you don't know, uh, it's the Roman Catholic Church. I'm just going to say that and move on, okay? Satan, however, has cleverly deceived the world into believing that the new year begins on January 1st, right in the middle of winter. I remember going, I'm going to tell you this, I remember going to a New Year's Eve party. Then I decided, when we, my girl, three of my friends, and we didn't have dates. You see, it didn't make any sense. So I said, well, go in and see how many people are coupled up because if they're coupled up, I don't want to go in. So my girlfriend and I sat in the car and my other friend, she was like, these girls are crazy. It doesn't matter. We came here to have a good time. And we sat in that car freezing till she came out and she didn't come out till she was ready to come out. That's how dumb it was. <laughs> That's how dumb I was. <laughs> the very same pagan practice God condemns in the Old Testament are perpetuated in our modern times. The very same festivals of paganism adopted by ancient Israel have become an integral part in our modern society today. So, if you were to read in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 15 to 18, the reason why uh, Yahuwah took ancient Israel into captivity, let's read it. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, 
and his testimonies which testified against them and they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. He's, you hear this? This is why ancient Israel went into captivity most of the time. They weren't obeying God, his laws, his statutes, his judgment. They just, they started to follow the heathens around them. And then they thought they were better. And that's what people do today. They think they're better than this group of denomination, this group of Christians against this group, this, this camp against this camp. And then you're still following the traditions of the heathens around you. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. What was the result of Israel following the custom of the heathens around them? Let's continue to read. Uh, this is um, verses 20 and 23. Therefore, Yahuwah was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight and afflicted them and delivered them into the hands of the spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. So at that time, they were in Egyptian captivity. Now they're in Assyrian captivity. They're going to go into Babylonian captivity. They're going to go into uh, Medo-Persian captivity. They're going to go into Grecian captivity. Roman ca captivity after captivity after captivity. Why? Because they do not obey. You can't partially obey. Some of you are in situations where you think you're obeying. You are patting yourself on the back, but you're still participating in these heathen ways. And yet you think you're obeying. Oh, well, now there was some, um, let's see. Do you suppose God has changed his mind about compromising with paganism? Maybe that's what you think. Well, you know, that was back then. Today, he doesn't really mind. These things are not important. They're just for our fun and our our pleasure. Well, let's see. Malachi 3, 6 says, For I am Yahuwah. You say, Lord. For I am Yahuwah. I change not. It's also repeated in Hebrews 13, 8. So if he says he doesn't change, guess what? Then that means he's still the same and he still feels the same about this. Speaking to the modern nations of Israel today, Yahuwah says, and I'm quoting, As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith Yahuwah, Go ye, serve ye everyone his idols, and therefore also, if you will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts, with your idols. Ezekiel twenty thirty nine. Listen, he is not happy. You call yourself Israel. I don't care what denomination you say. Either you're, you're going to be the house of Israel or those who say they are modern spiritual Israel. If you profess any of that, he says you're polluting him with these idols. These idols that you can't let go of. See, that's when you know something's an idol. You know something's an idol when you can't let it go. I asked you before, please don't be mad at me. This is just what I've learned and I'm sharing it with you. Go research for yourself and then decide in your heart. Is this something I want to do? Because we know that uh, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. He's looking for a people that's not of this world, that's in it, but that's the, but the, well, excuse me, I'm tongue tied, but not of this world. Okay. In other words, God is saying, be pagan if you insist. But stop calling yourself my child. Stop calling yourself after me. Stop calling yourself a believer. Stop calling yourself a Christian. Stop it. If you're participating in any pagan ways, I don't care what it is. Stop calling yourself anything that connects yourself to the Most High. Oh, let's see. So what should we do? I know this is getting long, so I gotta, I've got to come to an end. Let me see. Let's read uh, Revelation. Yeah, let's read Revelation 18. Because it talks about 
a, it, it's warning us something in these last days. Revelation 18, it says, And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. Angels are messengers, okay? <laughs> messengers. People are messengers. I'm being a messenger right now, right? Giving this message, okay? So, another angel came down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he said with a mighty and strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The Father is looking for th those to s worship him in spirit and in truth. If you say you have the spirit of God in you and or you let's say you say you have the truth because everybody has the truth everybody thinks they have the truth but you're not worshiping him in spirit in spirit means you are pulling away as you see the days approaching that his term his soon re, his son's soon return is imminent you are letting go of the things of this world because the things of this world should go start growing strangely dim and if not this will fall upon you. I don't care what denomination you're in. I don't care what, you're, what you say you believe. This will fall upon you if you're continuing to practice these pagan ways. Okay? For over thousands of years, um, popes have uh, played a powerful role in Western Europe over struggling with monarchs for power over a wide range of affairs of church and state, crowning emperors and regulating disputes among secular things. New Year's celebrations began 4,000 years in Babylon. It is practiced today by most everybody on the face of the earth. Satan, the devil, has indeed deceived the whole world. Revelation 12:9. But Yahuwah has sent his ministers to warn the world. He has sent people to cry aloud and spare not. He, has sent, he is sending a warning. Make a decision of what you want to do, but also make a decision of what you're going to be. Are you going to be a child of the Most High? Are you saying that you follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're still practicing in these pagan, heathen ways of this world? Just ask yourself the question. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm just here to share this topic with you. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, January 1st being celebrated is pagan. Now, I know we live in this world and the time is going to change. Uh, we're going to have to write 2023 and all that. But do you really have to participate in the, in the practice? Do you have to? Is it necessary? And then bring it into church. We're going to have night watches or whatever they call it. Is it necessary if you call yourself a believer? Well, that's all I have. I pray that you make resolutions right here and now that you will give your heart over to the Son of God, Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and let him change you so that you could have a new life in him. And then walk in that new life. Become a new creature and all things will become new. You, you, you'll see things in a different way once you uh, become born again. So my prayer with to you all right now is I pray that you will take what I've said, uh, what I've uh, shared with you, and research it for yourself. And if you find truth in it, then follow it. If it's wrong, then don't bother with it. Continue with your pagan ways. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be jesting with you. It is a serious matter. But anyway, I appreciate you spending this time with me. And until we meet again, may the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Shalom.